Hello and welcome again to another tutorial video from Basic Fishing. Now most people know that on the days where I don't go out to do surf casting, I do a lot of wolf fishing and I really enjoy it. Whether I am trying to target big fish, legal fish, getting lucky or just having a casual session on catching bait fish. So for today's video, I'd like to share some tips and tricks I had learned on how to target the bait fish that are usually present around the wolf. Hopefully, this video will help for those who are struggling on catching their first fish or just wish to know on how to catch more of the bait fish that are present around the wolves of New Zealand. Now of course, good thing about the wolf is that it leads you directly into deeper water. But because the wolf is a structure, it also provides a hiding place for the fish to hide and also provides food for the bait fish. When you are on the wolf, it's really easy to see the small bait fish swarming all over the place and that is usually a very good sign showing that there are signs of life. The bait fish that are usually present around the wolf are the yellow-eyed mullet which most people would have caught in their childhood, jack mackerel also known as yellowtail and piper aka garfish. The other bait fish that you can encounter off the wolf are anchovies pilchards, small to large kawaii, and in rare occasions, the slimy blue mackerel. The rest are just small pesky pickers. So how do you target these bait fish? There are days when it can be difficult to catch these bait fish because maybe they aren't in the mood or the pickers get to the bait first. While to get them into the mood, you need to get the burly in the water to start a feeding frenzy. Here, I got my homemade burley and that is enough to stir up an activity as you can see here. It's really amazing and a positive sign to see a burley bag being swarmed by small bait fish. So what is the most suitable rig to use for bait fish? The rig I usually use are sabiki rigs like these black magic tackle styles here. These sabikis I have used since childhood and caught me so many good bait fish over the years and are still great to use today. It was only recently that I learned that you can jig with the beakies and when the fish are in the mood it is a solid magnet and I have caught so many fish using this method. A good tip I like to point out is that if you jig your sabiki around the structure where the bait fish will be hiding it won't be long before you get hooked up. However this method is only effective against small bait fish and I have yet to have caught a big macro using this method. To be honest, I've only caught small bait fish, whether it is an anchovy, pilchard or mackerel, but I have caught so many of them. So this method is great to use when you want to catch most fish and it's a great method to use when there are lots of bait fish present. But what happens if the bait fish aren't there? What happens if the jigging method doesn't work? When the jigging method fails, I then switch up to my bait and use small baits on my sabiki. Now it is a bit of a hassle when having to cut up small chunks of bait every second, especially when there are pesky pickers around. Not to mention catching undersized snapper is a bit of a pain, especially when they swallow the hook. However, it is a good idea to use the bait when the jigging isn't working. And this has happened before. Also with bait, you are likely to catch those larger wary fish that might be around. Now, in my experience, I found that in order to catch the larger bait fish, you need to use bait in order to catch them. Like here for example, this prime size jack mackerel was only catchable when I was using bait. They don't seem to be as easily fooled as the smaller mackerels. Kawaii's are always suckers for baits as well. And I usually use small pieces of oily bait to tempt the bait fish into biting, whether it is bonito, mullet, or pilchard. Sometimes I like to use mussel baits or pippies as well, and that is good for um, any bait fish, but that can also tempt Perori into biting as well. I had yet to catch a large mackerel jigging for them with Tsubiki, and only succeeded in catching one kawaii on jigging. So far with the jigging with the Tsubiki, I've only caught small bait fish but in large numbers. And usually when I jig for mackerel, I usually use the smaller hooks, so it's easier for the fish to grab the hook and get caught. Sometimes you can get more than just one macro on your sabiki too. 
However, if the small snappers continue plague you and keep swallowing down your Sabiki hook while using your bait, here is another solution if the Sabiki rig keeps getting burnt out. So the other solution that I recommend is use a ledger rig with small recurve hooks and light sinker. Prime example is this one barrel KLT hook along with a light trace between 30 to 40 pound to create a ledger rig and attach a 3 ounce sinker. It's the best way to avoid gut hooking snapper and also works with your normal bait fish too, including mackerel, kawaii and mullet. Before I got back into using tabiki rigs, this was my primary option as I was sick of having to deal with undersized snapper, especially the ones that keep swallowing down the hook. This rig is more ideal to use during summer, whereas winter, I stick to the usual sabiki rig as most snappers would have left due to the cold. Some people may think the trace I am using is heavy, but in saying that, the diameter is thinner unlike most traces that are sold and having extra heavy trace is beneficial, especially when you hook onto a large fish and you need to either fight it or pull it up. So when I use this ledger rig method, I try to use more baits as possible so that 1. The smell of the bait will attract the small fish 2. Is that it is still small enough for the fish to get their mouth into and 3. Is that I don't want to choke my hook to the point where the hook point isn't exposed which can interfere with my hook up. With this method, you are likely to hook onto Trevally as well if you are lucky. I did however catch large mackerels with large baits before that were meant for snapper which was quite a sight. Another good thing about circle hooks is that even in slack line it is usually difficult for fish to get itself free, unlike the regular J style hooks. And with circle hooks, you don't need to strike to hook onto your fish. A good point I'd like to point out is, try and cast away from the pier, sometimes as bigger bait fish might hang around the back, whereas close in, you usually just get the smaller fish. Finally, I like to cover up what rod and reel setup I use for targeting bait fish. Usually I just use a general piece of gear, but for extra benefits, I've been using some specific gears to gain more advantage in my fishing. For example, whenever I'm using a sabiki rig for jigging, I use my trout setup with braid. Braid has no stretch and is highly sensitive, so as soon as you feel the fish bite, I strike immediately to hook onto it. Another benefit is that if there are kawai present, I can immediately switch on my sabiki to a small lure to try and hook onto those kawai. When using my small ledger rig, I use a general size rod, like my classic telescopic rod, in order to be able to fight against a decent fish like a kawai. So I hope everyone enjoyed watching this video and have learned a thing or two on targeting bait fish, whether it is a macro, mullet, or kawai. If you have, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming fishing videos. Also don't forget to check out my other tutorial videos such as how to get started on wolf fishing, how to make your own burly, how to fish with a sabiki rig, and how to make your own burly. Again, Thank you for watching and I hope to see everyone again very soon.